How's it going guys? Bloody Vintage here. Thought I'd just uh, show you some lighters. I've had a few questions lately. Uh, what happens a lot of the times is you, you buy a lighter and it just won't light. And you're wondering what the hell is going on. Uh, so I'm gonna help you kind of troubleshoot uh, those. When you're buying a lighter, the first thing I'd say to look for, when you depress this, you want this to come up on a right angle. If it's not coming up all the way and it's only going about this far, um, there's a problem with the actual wheel. Sometimes it can just be gunked up and it might be a simple fit uh, fix, um, but I have bought them in the past and I found out that um, certain things in the wheel are, uh, are broken. Uh, I'm not gonna take this fully apart. Um, I wish I kept my last one to show you that what did have that issue. Um, but there's a lot of connections going on in here. So just avoid those at all costs. If you have one, uh, then I'd say simply get a really small screwdriver, take off these two little screws, pull this off. There's a large spring on this depressor button. That'll come out. So just remember how everything goes <clears throat> and take a look at it and try to diagnose. The big thing is when you take it apart, make sure you take as many pictures as possible to remember how to put it back together. Um, the next thing you want to look for is obviously a spark. So it's pretty obvious when you see a spark, a little bit of smoke comes out. That means you have a good flint, good to go. It may not last forever. It may be worn down, but at least it'll get the fire started. Um, if you don't have that, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, kind of how to diagnose that. It's all right. If it, if it, the wheel turns and there's no spark or nothing happens, that's okay. Uh, you can get replacement flints, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, the next thing is uh, a wick. So here, I just got a little bit of a wick coming out. Um, as long as you have some wick there, you're usually good to go. Um, that being said, if only like very, very little of it is coming out, um, then you probably want to get uh, tweezers and sort of pull it out. Even like a really small pair of pliers can do the trick. Pull it out, not too far, or your flame will be quite large. Um, but just a little little bit of a wick is all you really need. Okay, so let me uh, sort of show you the different types. Uh, this is a Ronson uh, Whirlwind. Uh, a lot of them you may not know, but they actually have a pull up um, sort of windproof screen there, which is great. Um, everything's accessible at the bottom. Some Ronsons and, and different um, lighters come with a sleeve, uh, even ones that are look like this. The Zippo is obviously a sleeve, but there's also lighters like the Ronson that you look at the bottom and it'll have no screws or anything. All you simply need to do is usually take out the inner piece, which is usually easier said than done. Uh, and right away, you can sort of see where the um, uh, where the flint would be uh, adjusted. And you can see this one lines right up, flint screw and the flint right there in the Zippo. Oh, good, still lights. So that being said, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to take a look at your flint. So right here, uh, I'm saying, so the big one, this is for filling your lighter fluid. I'll show you that in a minute. But literally what I usually use is a dime. I find dimes are nice and thin. I can get in here. You can get a screwdriver or anything else you want. Try not to strip these. A dime works best. Uh, I like to think it's the most realistic one because everybody had a dime in their pocket uh, back in the day and you know sometimes still today. So be careful. Uh, open this upside down to start because this spring is going to pop out. And if you have it facing downwards and you're not paying attention and it springs out with your flint, your flint might roll under your table and you may never find it again. Okay. And you can hear that twisting. It's almost like winding a clock. You go very slowly, keep some pressure on it because it's going to push out on you. And now you see the spring coming out. So what I'll do now is now I'll put it upside down and I'll slowly, slowly take out the spring. Great. Now, something to notice is my flint is still stuck inside, okay? So when you look at your spring, if you can see that, uh, at the end is a plunger. That is not your flint. I've made that mistake in the past, being like, oh, the flint's in there, that's great. 
That is purely the plunger for the flint so the flint doesn't go sliding through your spring. So save that, be very careful. And then you're gonna just turn your lighter upside down. And what should pop out is this. That is your flint. Now let's say you weren't sparking at all. See, this is a perfect example. What the hell? You know, I bought this lighter and it's not even sparking. You may just have simply no flint in there. So what you can buy even off Amazon, they still sell these like Ronson um, flint wheels is what they're called. And literally there's a bunch of flints in there and it's just silly little contraption, but it works. And you just pop out your new flint and you're laughing. As you can see, I've already replaced this one uh, as well with some vintage lighters. I don't think I have it on this one, but some are actually built in. So when you unscrew, I'm just gonna do the other one now to show you. When you unscrew, this is where your fuel door is. Some, I've had ones in the past that they actually have the flint screwed into your fuel door. So you can always look at that as well. Uh, and then I'll show you with like a Zippo. And that's what you'll find is they'll actually have replacement flints sitting right in there. These ones are red. Uh, so I'm good to go with two more flints that came with the lighter. So just look around your lighter. You might actually already have a flint before you go on Amazon or go to any um, like tobacco shop or corner store that might sell Zippos. Usually they have a Zippo display. They probably have Zippo lighter fluid. They may have Zippo wicks and uh, Zippo flints. So you might get lucky. Okay, so that being said, after you find your um, flint or get a new flint, you can put that back in. Now what happens sometimes, and I'm not gonna take this apart to, uh, to show you at the moment, but let's say for whatever reason, you put in a new flint and it's still not sparking, you're not sure really what is happening. The biggest thing I found is simply just corrosion around where the flint is. So your flint that the lighter came with might even be in there. But what I found in the past and taking a look, it's gonna be really hard to show you, but if you you can look closely on this, right in there, I've had my flint literally just corroded inside of there where I literally had to take these screws off, the flywheel all apart. I had to literally scrape at it and punch the old flint back through because it was literally just corroded and stuck in there and there wasn't enough for even it to spark. So you can take this apart with the two little screws. Remember how everything goes. Remember what side the everything is on. It's very specific. So just take lots of pictures before you do. And basically uh, you can even see there's some corrosion right there. This one's fine though, but literally I had to punch it back through and I had to scrape it with a wire brush. Really a pain. Um, so that's kind of uh, how a flint would work. Uh, and really same thing on here, another lighter. Again, the, um, the flint screw here, same thing. Um, okay, so open up the fuel door. So I'm gonna show you a little bit more. So you can see, you know, you have a little bit of, uh, you know, what they call a cotton wadding in there, uh, or sometimes wool wadding. And again, with the Zippo, it's even more clear and easier to replace. So you see that, that's literally what you spray your Zippo lighter fluid into. It doesn't need to be Zippo brand. I think there's even still Ronson in there. Um, you literally just squirt it in there and the wool absorbs it, keeps it in there, uh, keeps it moist, and that way it'll keep lighting for a period of time. Um, I'll show you that with this one here. Again, to squirt it in, not too much. I usually just give a little squirt just to top mine up. If it has never been filled, then maybe give it a really good long two or three squirts. Uh, make sure it doesn't overflow. If it does and you get lighter fluid on your external piece of your lighter, uh, make sure to wipe that away because when you do go to light up, it may ignite it and you might have a lighter flyer, lighter fire on your hands. Um, so make sure you got the wadding in there. It should usually always be in there. Now, the thing people don't know about inside there is your wick. So you're going to be like, oh, great, great information. But my wick, I don't even have one. So this is a Zippo wick. Uh, this is a thicker one. 
Uh, this probably won't work for this or this. I've sort of tried it out before. This is more of the Zippo type. And if you can see inside of my Zippo, it's quite a, um, a sparse. And that's why it gives it sort of the big, well, Zippo lighter flame. So this, this one would be nice and easy to replace inside of here because really all, all I'd have to do is I'd unscrew this, which is, again, the where the flint is. I had to keep it upside down because I don't want my flint falling out during all this, but I would actually just take out my compressor or my plunger. And again, you can see the plunger on the end is even a larger one. And I'd take out all of that and then I would get tweezers. Well, I take the flints out. I get tweezers. I'd pull out all of the wool. And what you'll find inside, and I'm just gonna put this back on so I don't lose it. What you find inside is a lot of manufacturers and people. This is kind of what you do: is you kind of bend your wick like that inside of it, and the wool wadding sort of sits around it. So the idea is when you soak it with your Zippo lighter fluid, this cotton wadding absorbs it and transfers it to the wick and the wick stays wet all the way up to the top and that's what lights it. It's kind of, you know, you wouldn't really think that would happen as a, as a modern thinker. Um, the way we know lighters these days, because um, I think they're more actually just like compressed gas. I don't think there's actually a wick in, uh, in, in many modern lighters at all. It's these old ones. But if you ever look at an old uh, kerosene lantern, like a barn lantern, it's got a big wick out of it. Same thing. That wick dunks in fuel and absorbs it all the way to the tip and you light it. Uh, this one just has an extra step because you want the cotton wadding because you want it to be able to hold that lighter fluid. And you don't want this lighter fluid just willy-nilly sitting in here because there's not a good enough seal around everything. It'd be spilling out of the wick, it'd be spilling out of here. So the cotton wadding has to um, absorb it. So that being said, uh, lighter, or sorry, a lighter wick, I'm not gonna show you the replacement today. Literally, it's super complicated to do with these ones. Um, <clears throat> with a Zippo, it'd be much easier and I've done it before where I pulled out all the cotton wadding. If you check my other video, I have it with the Zippo, the cotton wadding, and I had to put the wick back sort of throughout the wadding. I didn't actually replace the wick, but I sort of had to deal with it. So it was uh, interesting to see. Um, so those are kind of the main uh, things you'll need. Luckily I got some uh, virgin lamb's wool, some uh, vintage stuff that I can use as my cotton wadding. If you can't find any of that, it's kind of hard to find. Uh, literally like, I think cotton balls, uh, should actually do the trick. It may not absorb for uh, long, uh, even I've used wool, um, wool string before, like thicker wool string, uh, and, and shoved it in there. Cause it's a lot easier to pack bit by bit in. Uh, if you have old dried out wadding, it may not absorb for a long time. Like this lighter, I can fill it up with lighter fluid and it'll be good for a month. This lighter, I can fill it up, it'll be good for two weeks. This lighter, if I fill it up, it'll be good for uh, like five days. So, and I've even replaced the, the cotton wadding on this one and it's still like that. So don't start to freak out if your lighter isn't holding fluid. Um, literally all just depends on the lighter. So find one that holds fluid uh, for a long period of time, stores it well. And, uh, and you should be good to, uh, good to go. I'm gonna make sure you've installed that, right? <clears throat> okay, well, that's good to know, because sometimes what you can do, and I've done it here, I think I've actually over, over tightened the flint. And I remember that now from my last video. So I'm gonna mess around with that a little bit. You can over tighten the flint where it's, you know, too jammed into your wheel and it's not giving you any, um, any progress. And what I'm worried about now is maybe my flint fell out when I wasn't paying attention. I'm just gonna do this. Yep, that's exactly what happened. So I obviously threw it in here like a dummy, thinking that was out of there. So again, there's another perfect example. There's my flint. You can see it in there, plunge it in. 
up in there, take a lot of pressure. And there, back to normal. Okay, so that should hopefully give you a better idea. Um, what I will do, I'll do another video in the future uh, and actually take apart the top of my lighters uh, or one that isn't working. I don't wanna do that right now because everything is working fine. And unless it's not working fine, don't take uh, apart your lighter. Uh, just too many old pieces that, you know, a spring can pop out, not be put back the right way inside the wheel. Um, there's a certain amount of pressure in between here that might get changed. You might put the wheel in backwards so it stops spinning. Uh, a lot of different things can happen. But hopefully that can give you a good idea of uh, the different types of lighters, uh, the wick replacement, cotton wadding, um, uh, flint wheel, and fuel. Uh, and that really is and a dime to take it up all apart. That's really all you should need to get your vintage lighter going. Uh, if it's still not working, um, I would say it's just going to be corrosion. And uh, just really having to clear this out if you get like, um, like a, a steel wire or something like that and run it through your wick opening, run it through your flint opening, take all the wadding out, literally get it down to the bones, clean it out, and then repack uh, with your wick, your wadding, uh, your flint, new flint and everything, uh, and maybe do a full overhaul. Uh, you can always try that, but uh, that is a, a bit of a pain. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better idea of what to do and can help uh, some of my viewers out on, uh, on their future um, Zippo, Ronson, Wow, there's a million different brands, <laughs> uh, lighter repairs or troubleshooting.